What defines the essence of your existence? For most of us, it's the intricate working of what is regarded as the most complex thing in our very universe, the human brain. It allows us to orchestrate our thoughts, emotions and reactions. Now, imagine your life without this very fundamental organ. Can you even do it? If you can, it's terrifying, isn't it? And I bet you think the idea is just impossible. Well, it's actually not. In fact, a rather underappreciated piece of literature found exactly what it's like to live without a brain. For one day, a man had a normal life, working a regular job with a family, and the next minute, it's to change forever, in the eyes of not only himself, but doctors and psychologists alike. Nevertheless, this case has allowed us to uncover some truly amazing things about how the human brain actually works and how resilient it can actually be. How it'll stop at nothing to continue your survival. So allow me to share his story and everything psychologists have learned from it. For this man lives his life with about 90% of his brain missing. The patient in question would perhaps be around 60 years old presently, potentially born around 1963, although this is somewhat of a guess. You see, due to ethical constraints, we don't know a lot about their personal life, and with good reason. If the case comes to more prominent light, it puts the patient at a risk of things like exploitation. It's important that we respect his privacy in order to not cause any harm. So, for now, we'll just have to call him the patient. In fact, the only personal things we actually know about the patient is that they're a man, their age, and that they were born in France. In terms of the patient's childhood, again, the literature remains quite sparse. He occasionally attended the doctors and the hospital due to a period of onset muscle weakness to which he had a shunt placed in his head. It turns out this was a product of fluid buildup in his brain, known as hydrocephalus. Eventually, the shunt was removed at the age of 14, but other than that, he lived a relatively normal time as a child. Eventually, the patient graduated La Terminale and got a job in the civil service. The job was good money, and the man eventually settled down with his wife, of whom he had two children with. But comes his 44th birthday, and he's in pain. His left leg had become severely weak for at least two weeks, and this was becoming very concerning. So, the patient went to the doctors, before promptly being taken to hospital, and what they were to tell him was to change his life forever. This was the general outcome. As you can see, this is his brain on the left, with a normal brain on the right. It doesn't take a genius to realise how different each of these brains actually are. Yours, for instance, is like the one on the right, whilst the patient's is like yours, only with 90% looking just barren. The doctors were honestly baffled, and even though it was already diagnosed as a child, the doctors went back to hydrocephalus being the cause. You see, hydrocephalus itself is a neurological disorder of which, as we've already established, is caused by abnormal buildup of cerebrospinal fluid in the brain's ventricles. Most of the causes seem to be birth defects or developmental disorders such as spina bifida or encephalocele. With these disorders, little is known how they're actually caused, although it's believed that the mother not getting enough folic acid during pregnancy is the significant risk factor. The patient showed no other signs of these illnesses, so it kind of ruled these out. The other theories tend to posit brain tumours or head injuries as a huge giveaway of hydrocephalus, but again, there was no inclination to believe this being the case. The patient had no damage other than the clear abnormalities seen as a product of the hydrocephaly. It was then believed that it had to be genetic. For example, in our body there are proteins known as aquaporins. They tend to play a crucial role in moving water and producing and storing cerebrospinal fluid. When the genes that code for these proteins AQP1 and AQP13 are mutated, fluid transportation is imbalanced, making hydrocephalus likely to occur, explaining why he had it at such a young age. Another likely contributing gene was SLC12A2, which encodes a protein called NKCC1. This basically transports ions across cell membranes and is active in the choroid plexus, a structure in the brain responsible for producing CSF. But there were a few key differences with our patient. One, he had his untreated for a relatively long time. Untreated, the life expectancy for someone isn't good. If you're untreated, you don't expect to live past the age of three. Now, our patient did exceed this already, but he wasn't spoken to by the doctors about it for 30 years following his last treatment at the age of 14. And in regards to this, the patient had their shunt removed during this appointment. 
Now, a shunt is a hollow tube surgically placed in the brain or spine to help drain this fluid and redirect it to another location to be reabsorbed in the body. Come 14, he'd lost this, and instead of being drained, or worse, it killing him, the fluid just built up around the space where his brain should be. But perhaps finally the most insane difference is that even though again these brains look so incredibly different, and you would have thought that they would have acted differently, the patient reported no real issue. As said, he lived a happy, fulfilling life for the past 30 years without any difficulty, up until some leg discomfort. Even though almost all of his brain on these CT scans was just missing, this is what puzzled doctors the most, and they were desperate to see the psychological effects. The patient offered a lot to the field of science and did therefore undergo some testing. It was first notified that even with what was technically classed as serious brain damage, the patient showed no intellectual differences compared to standard humans. They had an IQ of 84, which may seem low since the average is about 100, but actually around 16% of Americans are below 85 themselves. So in reality, it's far from abnormal. As said, the patient worked and completed life just as any other person. However, the following results were actually significantly more shocking and were to progress psychology hugely. The patient's brain was actually never deleted. The articles that share this story are actually kind of wrong. Stay with me though, because it's honestly even more interesting. These CT scans see areas of lower radio density, which cerebrospinal fluid slash full ventricles show. What was actually found was the patient had the same number of brain cells, at least hypothetically. In actuality, these ventricles just became excruciatingly large, full of cerebrospinal fluid, which is what we see on these scans. With being so large, they've pushed the white and grey matter of the brain outwards, compressing it to the edges of the skull. Because your skull has a fixed volume, there's just nowhere for this cerebrospinal fluid to go, so it just clumps around the edges. Eventually, the inside of his head would have just become completely full of pressure. But why is this so shocking? Well, obviously a brain tends to work when it looks like this. The patient still worked when it looked like this. Meaning, this is an excellent argument for plasticity and functional recovery. Now, plasticity tends to refer to brain regions taking over nearby regions' functions in the event something gets damaged or dies. For example, if you lose part of your broker's area, which is responsible for speech production, say in a stroke, it's been found that nearby parts of the brain will take over these lost functions i.e. speech. With our patient, this kind of happened at a huge level. All of his pressure-filled brain will have taken over some functions, hence why he still maintained an IQ only slightly below average. These regions here on screen will have taken over regions that would have been over here and etc. In fact, the only effects we did see in the patient worth noting were headaches, cognitive delay, memory impairment, urinary dysfunction, visual disturbances, eye swelling, weaknesses slash sensory problems, and he would have been significantly more likely to be at risk for traumatic brain injury if his head was damaged in the location his brain was squished into, which are the general patterns in which we see hydrocephalus present itself, and these can be explained due to the strong pressure in his head, with the odd exception for some neuroplasticity not being fully accounted for. And this isn't abnormal either. Hydrocephalus has taught us just how resilient the brain is. There's been many cases that have shown amazing people fight the condition, living relatively normal lives, even without the shunts ever inserted. Take the case of Trevor, for instance, a boy with hydrocephalus, who lived quite a normal childhood, without even modern medicine being the essential factor. The only essential factor seems to be your brain. Unfortunately, our main patient in question is believed to have died very recently, and there is no information from the autopsy. But in asking a neurosurgeon, it is believed that what likely killed him is brainstem herniation and compression due to the hydrocephalus causing the pressure in his brain to be just unbelievably high. But still, in his life, he's taught us just how amazing the human brain is, how it can fight until the very end, and how injury almost means nothing to it, with it doing its best to perform functional recovery. Unfortunately, he'll never quite know just how much he's contributed to advancing medicine, so, we owe the patient a great deal for aiding the fields of science. For there's a reason your brain is regarded as the most complex thing in the universe, and with that complex thing, maybe it's time you appreciate it and do something for yourself. Go on, go ask them out. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate every single one of you. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, it's free and it really helps me out. 
See you next time.